Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me in my studio today. I am Tracy Lee Green and I'm a Canadian acrylic wildlife painter. And if you want to paint like a pro, these videos are for you. If you like what you see on my videos, please hit the thumbs up at the bottom and click on that bell notification and it'll send you a quick notification every time I put on a new video. Are you excited? I am. Let's get started. So if you check out some of my artwork on my website, tracyleegreen.com, you'll notice that, or you may not be able to notice, I actually don't use black paint. I come from a watercolor background and traditional watercolor doesn't use black paint. It's, um, they don't use black or white. Now, if you're an acrylic or oil painter, you do have the freedom um, to use black or white paint. It's just a preference. I really like mixing my own blacks. And in fact, I don't think of them as blacks anymore. I prefer to think of them as darks. So in my paintings, I always have light middles and darks. And rather than using black as a dark, I mix my own darks. Um, now you can see here that as I mix them, I test them and they vary. We can go from a very bright dark that's um, injected with lots of blue to redder darks, um, some golden darks, more purple darks. So before I use them on my painting, if I want to see just whether or not I've got the value and the warmth or the cool correct, I test them out on this little white sheet of paper uh, as I go along, which I find really, really helpful. Sometimes it's not easy to see on the palette whether or not you have it correct. Uh, really easy to mix your own darks. This is what I use. And there's, like recipes, there's always uh, different formulas from different artists. But I use three colors in different ratios. So I use ultramarine blue. I also use alizarin crimson. Now a little note. I typically I use golden products. Uh, I really like the um, transparency and I also like the pigments in them. I've bought other brands of acrylics and I noticed that the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine blue did not make a dark the same way that golden acrylics do. So keep in mind, depending on the materials you're using, your darks may not get as dark as my darks just because different manufacturers use different amounts of pigments in their paint. Um, just unfortunately, you get what you pay for, I think. So alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and then I also use quinacridone nickel azo gold. I love this color. It is a really, really warm orange rather than using burnt sienna because burnt sienna is really opaque so you can't see through it. And as you can see here, I'll just move it up to the camera a little bit. Um, this is a really transparent color. Um, we can see those black bars through the paint really well, uh, which I really like. That's part of my painting style. I do a lot of glazing and a lot of layering. So I use almost equal ratios to start of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. I mix those together. Now it's really, really red. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a bit more blue. I want to bring it back from the red because I'm just going to try and make a neutral dark. See, it's darkening up there. So it's not quite blue, not quite red. This is when I introduce a bit of the orange. Now, you don't have to use the uh, nickel as a orange. I use it because I do a lot of fur being a wildlife painter. And it's a wonderful, wonderful color to use for sunlit fur. Um, it's just so pure rather than mixing oranges. But if you don't have this, you can also mix a little bit of um, your yellow. My paints have been on the palette for a few days. But you could do a yellow and a little bit of your red. Mix your own orange and then use that instead of using something like the nickel as a gold. Sorry, it's not an orange, it's a gold. So, and as you can see, now that I've added that nickel as a orange, see how it's darkening up? 
what's happening is it's combining with the blue. They're opposites on the color wheel, orange and blue. And when you mix them, they neutralize. And I'm making a really nice neutral dark by using alizarin crimson, French ultramarine blue, and nickel azo. So I'll take a different piece of paper so you can see. This is a... Uh, so this is the dark I just mixed. Now look at that for a really, really nice, not too purple, not too gold. It's a nice neutralized dark. Now, this is all transparent paint, so you'll see the white through here in the bottom of what I'm doing. If you want a really thick, dark, 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 I just use more layers. So some pieces that um, I create can have, you know, 8 to 12 layers of paint on them in varying degrees in varying places. So that's how I mix dark paint. And if you want, you want it a bit redder. If you're doing, um, you know, say a red fox, well, of course, it's not going to have a black shadow. It's not even going to have black fur. You can just add more alizarin crimson and we're, we can take that dark to a reddish dark. Or say you're doing a forest floor and you need to do some really cool darks to give the forest that cool feeling. Then you would add a little bit of your, um, your ultramarine blue to create your dark more on the blue side. Um, so I hope this helped you create your darks. Play around and see just how dark you can get them. You can add in, um, now you'll notice I have a cooler blue here. This is uh, manganese blue. I can use manganese blue instead of the ultramarine and I get a lovely, lovely um, dark, dark grayish dark. Um, so use what you have. But I find just mix the three prim primary colors in varying uh, ratios and you get a beautiful dark. Keep in mind, too, that you will um, vary that based on the manufacturer. And I hope this was helpful. Let me know how you make out mixing your own dark paint.